Hello, my name is Tony Beers, and this is Movie Grades. Hey everybody, Tony Beers here again, and in this episode of Movie Grades, it's going to have a couple of firsts, and my first, first, is that I have received my first screener of Suburban Heroes. Now, if only I can actually get paid for doing these reviews. This screener was given to me by Terrence Cover, who saw my review of Heavy Mental, a movie which he worked on, and he asked me to review his web series, Suburban Heroes. Now, coincidentally, Terrence was at the Motor City Comic Con, where we interviewed many people, one of them being Larissa Gomez from the Saw movies. He just happened to walk by in the background during our interview with Larissa Gomez. There he is, right there. Small world, isn't it? Now the second first is that this will be my first review of a web series instead of a movie. Suburban Heroes is a reality show style superhero comedy. The best way I can describe this show is that it is kind of a cross between The Office and The Tick. And if you like either of those shows, you'll probably like this show as well. Now speaking of The Tick, just like The Tick, this series labels its seasons in a very unique way. The Tick doesn't merely say Tick Season 1, it says Tick versus Season 1. Which is the same thing that Suburban Heroes does. It says Sur Suburban Heroes versus Season 1. Which I thought that was a real clever joke that they did. And in this series of Suburban Heroes, it takes place in a universe in which superheroes actually do exist and are sponsored by the government. Now this series follows a superhero team which is led by this guy who is basically a slacker and who is trying to take advantage of this government grant given to superheroes. In most superhero stories the superheroes patrol a large city of some kind but in this series they patrol the suburbs. The name of this superhero team is the Freedom League of Justice Fighters. It's kind of a long name. What? And it makes it sound like you guys fight justice. The team's leader is Captain Payne, played by Mike Kamer, who also writes for the series. Captain Payne's power is, well, nothing. Now, <laughs> Captain Payne is basically this loser who lives with his mom and in his spare time makes videos which he uploads to the internet. <laughs> I mean, what a loser. Wait a minute. Anyway, and then there's Billy, who is played by Terrence Cover. Terrence Cover also edits the episodes, and he actually has a superpower. He has super speed. Now Billy is basically this science geek who is the brains of the team as well as the common sense of the team. And then there's Hunter, played by Chris Orden. Chris Orden is also the show's producer. His power is yet to be determined. They say he has a power but they haven't revealed it quite yet. He also is a narcoleptic and he is also like Captain Payne is a slacker who really doesn't want anything to do with his team and he basically is just in it for the checks that they get from the government. And then there's Skye, played by Susan Millen, who is the only girl of the group. And she actually has a real power too. She can fly. Now Skye is played by the very attractive Susan Millen, who also has a very sexy Australian accent. And unfortunately she is only in a few episodes, which is too bad since she's the only girl in this group. And like one character says, this place is a sausage fest. Now the team has a team transport, which has the best name for a team transport I've ever heard since Kill Bill's Pussy Wagon. The team's transport is called the F*** Truck. What exactly is a F*** Truck? Now 
In this series, the team battles perverted arch enemies, haunted toilets, demonic interdimensional portals, rival superhero teams, and the most evil, diabolical organization ever, the IRS. Now as far as the acting goes, this is another low budget independent production and it's not going to have professional actors in it. Now, that being said, the actors in, the, in here are actually not that bad. Now as far as the visuals goes, it's shot in this documentary style, so it doesn't need to have any kind of slick camera styles or anything like that, which is actually kind of clever since most documentaries are not shot with you know real expensive cameras and real cool camera angles or anything like that they can keep it simple which really works for this style of filmmaking and this series actually has a few special effects which are really actually not that bad for this type of series now as for the story the episodes are actually pretty funny and the concept is very unique although I do have to say that as with any TV series or any web series sometimes it takes a while for them to get in their groove this series is no exception this episodes kinda start off slow but they eventually get into their groove and I have to say I have seen a few episodes of the second season of this series and I have to say that that season is actually better than this season the stories are more in depth, the, the characters are more developed, and ju just overall they're just better episodes. For example, there's an episode in the second season which takes a look at the events from the first season from a different perspective, and we get to see that Captain Payne might be more of a hero than what we thought he was. Maybe. Now I'm not saying that this first season is bad, it's actually pretty good but just like any other TV shows you have to watch a couple episodes until you really get into the story and that's how this is the second season also guest stars Mike Hartman who is the director of Heavy Mental as well as Tom Sullivan who did the special effects for the Evil Dead movies so my final grade for Suburban Heroes versus season one is a B minus you can watch all of season one as well as some of season two on Terrence's YouTube channel ST Terrence. I'll put up a link in the description. You can also watch all of season one and some of season two as well as purchase the DVD at suburbanheroes.tv or at runamc.com. I'll also put up a link to the websites down in the description. The DVD special features include commentaries, alternate versions of episode 1, a bonus scene, artwork by Tom R. and Terrence Cover, photos by Andy Yeomans, who is also the show's cinematographer. My name is Tony Beers, and I'll see you next time. We're actually we're in Howell, Michigan. We want that grant money from the feds. We need at least one full-time member with a real power, remember? You want to go get a real job? The feds are sending an auditor over to look over our account. Sends you allocated funds for wig upkeep, pizza parties, and as much as $2,500 for a... Um, I'm not even exactly sure what this is. What exactly is a truck? Just a formal name for our team transport. I like the right house. But who cares? They're giving away free beer anyways, man. <laughs>